Hi, welcome to Jeremy's Tech Channel, and today we're going to be checking out Linux Mint Debian Edition 5. Okay, well, I got tipped off to um, Linux Mint Debian Edition 5 LC being available for download on 9to5 Linux. If you want to get Linux news, it's a great place to check. So I decided to grab that ISO and I'm throwing it onto a virtual machine and we're gonna check it out together. I haven't actually looked at it, so this will be a real time um, review, if you will. All right, to the installer. Let's go. English, yes. That's my time zone. That's my keyboard. Maybe I just need to wait a little bit. Give it a little time. This is me. This is... This is me. And next. A disk this disk and we'll move on are you sure yes I'm completely sure all right yes I definitely want the grub boot menu all right here we go and we're gonna put this in slow motion so that you don't have to sit there and put it in slow motion no we're gonna put it in and speed it up <laughs> The installation is now complete. Do I want to restart my computer and use the new system? Yes, please. All right, press enter. Boop, boop. We'll go to full screen. That's what we want. Let's see what we get. All right. Okay, let's log in here. And welcome to Linux Mint. Yeah, that's because I'm running on a virtual machine. Okay, so you get this great welcome screen here. I personally like welcome screens because there may be something that I need to know, um, especially when I'm a newbie learning this stuff. I do appreciate this, so thank you, Linux Mint team, for doing this. Uh, and look, obviously, you can disable it right there from startup but for people like myself look hey make yourself at home choose your favorite color you know what let's go with something random actually let's not go with something random and i'm guessing that's dark hey all right panel choice traditional or modern it's like your video hardware is not great okay fine so now we can set up time shift with snapshots, which is great. Um, this is a really great setup. Uh, but one thing that's bothering me right now is that I am not getting what I want for my display. So let me just do this and see what happens. But now here we are, we're there. And uh, we can set up time shift. We should do a video on time shift. Time shift is great. It's like Time Machine for Mac. You've got your choice here of rsync or if you've set up with ButterFS for your file management. It's great. You should check it out. Maybe I'll have a video ready showing how to use time shift because it's really great. Here's something else that's really great, um, is they just go ahead and include the multimedia codecs that you can install right there. Do I want to install additional software? Why, yes, please. So there it goes. It starts downloading from the Debian.org. Look, boom. You can see these installs happening in real time. Love it. 
Now let's just make sure it gets what it needs from me and my password. And we've got the multimedia codec, sweet. We can also check if we have the newest updates. Oh look, there's some more updates. So we can install the updates there. I won't waste your time with that. There's also, they go ahead and walk you through the system settings. This is something that's great. Now, once um, one thing you should know, this is the Cinnamon desktop environment. You know, there's different desktop environments like KDE, GNOME, um, there's window managers. There's a lot of cool stuff. XFCE is another uh, desktop environment. This is theirs. Um, I believe it was forked from an older version of GNOME and they loved it and they just kind of just kept tweaking it for usability. If you're interested in Linux um, and you're new, uh, this is definitely a good area to go. I believe their target audience, Linux Mint's target audience is new users and users that just want to get right to work um, and just take advantage of the stable, secure system that Linux provides. Um, and because of that, they've got some great little applications to make choices, um, to make some visual changes here. Let's see here. Um, let's look for something random that interests me. Uh, sure, I want a trash bin. Actually, I don't like trash bins, but hey, check it out. There's a trash bin down here in the little taskbar area. That's great. And then they've got their software manager. Now, this is unique to them. I've, you know, a lot of um, distributions have software management uh, systems, so just software management is not unique. But this one is unique to them. And hey, check it out. You've got Dropbox. You've got Inkscape. You've got Blender. Um, so if I were to grab Inkscape and look at the install, it's just going to install here. And boom, I'm guessing we will be done installing in just a couple of seconds. It's pretty sweet. Done. I can launch it even from there. There it is. There's Inkscape. Like that. Love me some Linux because of that. Um, they also, you can configure a firewall, which is great. Woohoo, I can't type a password. And here we go. Look at that. Let's make it all nice and big. Check it out. You can set up a firewall easily right here. So before I've even exited this startup screen, I've been able to update my system. I've been able to install um, multimedia codecs. I've been able to set up um, a backup through time shift. I've been able to get the basic look of my system taken care of. There's documentation right here available in PDF or HTML for you to see and then release notes here. So we can check out the release notes. Opens right up into Firefox and check it out. Um, tells you exactly what's going on with this version. Remember this just came out. I don't even think they've put it on the website yet as I'm recording this video. I'm sure it'll happen soon. Um, once again, thanks to 9to5Linux for tipping me off to this because I'm pretty interested in this um, distribution. So here we go. All these other issues and uh, uh, options. You can sit there and read through these release notes. Reading through release notes is good. I did have issues with the LMDE installer, but um, I got it figured out. It's no big deal. Um, once again, this is pre-release. Um, so let's check it out. We've got that. We've got help, web forums, IRC chat room. What? Look, these people are really trying to help you out. This is great. And if you love this project, check it out. Go ahead, donate, help them out. A couple of quick things that I want to do is I want to dig around in the Cinnamon desktop environment because I ha I don't, you know, daily use this desktop environment. And the organization of things is great. All my applications, great. 
accessories. Obviously, you can read. <laughs> but check it out. I mean, they're organized well. It comes with LibreOffice. Um, you've got uh, sound and video here. Let's see here with the box. But let's say, uh, ooh, they also have another. Uh, there's their software management. And they have system monitor. Let's check this out. What's going on with my resources? I'm going to use their tools because that's what they gave me. Uh, it's showing all my CPUs individually. I'm using 1.2 gigabits of RAM. Um, you can see my network situation. Check it out. I do love how as I'm um, making these windows bigger, it scales really great. That is really nice. Um, I do like their dark theme. It's pretty great. Um, panel settings. Let's check out the panel settings. I am just hopping all around, aren't I? You can auto hide your panel. That's great. Um, panel edit mode. What is going on with panel edit mode? What can I edit? I don't know. You can add some applets. Which we did already. Okay, cool. I want to turn off panel edit mode. But here you go. As I just did some random things, you can see what's happening. Um, and it took up uh, 6.5 gigabytes of space to do this install. You know, and seeing this kind of thing uh, really helps you if you are on a low resource situation trying to use uh, Linux, you know, uh, and that's great, that's fine. Okay, so a lot of people like to see this view as well. So here you go, essentially seeing the same information, just a different way. Close terminal. Uh, and just because I'm curious, because when you start working and, and, and digging around in a new distribution, a new desktop environment, you kind of want to see if you can get comfortable with it. And one of those things is as simple and silly as it sounds, just some, it's amazing how it feels fresh and different when you pull in your own uh, aesthetic. It just really feels great to do so. So I'm just going to take a quick gander here on some of these wallpapers. Look, and you may want to see what options there are. I mean, there are some just some nice looking ones. And then you've got your classic branded ones here. This one's pretty interesting. Um, so yeah, this is outstanding. I am navigating this quite easy. Um, I really, really do like this cinnamon desktop environment. Um, Desklets. Okay, clock desklet. Uh, digital photo frame. Let's see that. Okay, and you can move it around. Obviously, I don't have any photos installed. Yes, I want to remove digital photo frame. What about you? Are you available? Okay. Check it out. Now I want to mess with it. Okay. You can make it really big. You know, you can change the text color. Let's make it really weird. Select. And uh, you can change the date format. Hey, that's pretty cool. So I just made a really funky, weird clock. And it looks like you can set this up to launch a specific program. Like the home, that's kind of cool, but really not worth it to me. And that's probably not even how they intended to use it. But guess what, guys? If I'm doing this, chances are someone else is going to be trying to do it this way too. So if you're a part of the LNDE team, um, this will let you know kind of what an average user is going to do, how they're going to use this, how they're going to try to make this happen. Check this out. Okay, now this is very helpful. Um, get your Google Calendar, System Monitor, 
These are great. Uh, cryptocurrency ticker. Let's see here. What would be... Let's see here. I love all of this. This is very cool. There's a lot more that you can download and have access to. Let's say I'm really concerned about my CPU. So I will do that and I will put him, hey -oh, all of my cores right there. Is there a way to configure it and make it more transparent? Because that would be great. Show background. Well, I guess you kind of need that, don't you? Hide decorations. <laughs> you can't even see it if you do it that way. <laughs> okay, I guess you need the background. But you get the choice to do it if you want or not. That's cool. All right. Boom. This is really, really nice getting through and figuring out a system. I really do like this desktop environment. Um, system reports. Install language packs. Okay, I'll deal with that later. I like that. I made this super ugly. But you know what? That's easy. I can remove it. I can work in this system, guys. This is this is pretty great. Um, a lot of people want to know when you're looking at, hey, I'm interested in this distribution. What makes it different from everything else? And all I can say is they've obviously spent a lot of time making sure that things are accessible and easy for users to just start working. I definitely appreciate that. Configuration is easy. It seems to be, you know, snappy on my system. Um, the other thing is it's, it's very evident that to me, uh, just from my reading of some things, that a lot of people are starting to want to move away from Ubuntu. Some people love Ubuntu, and if you love Ubuntu, great. No problems there. Um, I'm considering putting on my wife's laptop uh, Ubuntu for multiple reasons, and I'll talk about it here on the channel. But really, uh, there's some things with Snap and, you know, the, the corporation side of things, and, and you know, this is an opportunity to get that great Cinnamon desktop environment, that great Linux Mint um, install process. That was easy. And uh, get that Debian base um, stability. And uh, this system is super snappy on my virtual machine. I would definitely consider using this. Um, right now I'm using uh, a different operating system as my dri daily driver. I'm using Endeavor OS. My wife and I are considering traveling a lot more um, and an Arch-based system really um, can hinder if I don't have good network connection. So something like LMDE5 is really interesting me as a, something that I might need to shift to if I uh, don't have good internet access. Um, if you stuck through this video, thank you. I really appreciate it. Give us a thumbs up, you know, that like and subscribe situation. We're going to do more reviews of these operating systems, uh, get a sense of them. I'll get better at figuring out what you want to, to see, what you want to experience on these reviews. So let me know in the comments what you're wanting to see, what you're wanting to experience, what you're looking for in these um, what you're looking for in these distributions. And if there's one you want me to specifically review, let me know in the comments. We'll see if it's something that I can make happen for you. All right. Thanks for joining us today. See you later.